What's up guys, Yankee here and in this video, we are going to be looking at multiple ways to use ZSH aliases to boost our terminal productivity. So without any further ado, let's get started. Since you clicked on this video, I assume you already have ZSH installed in your machine. So if I do which dollar cell, it's going to show I'm running ZSH cell by default. So we need to have a ZSH configuration file along with us to create aliases and it usually resides on your home directory. So if I do nvim and look into my home directory for a file called .jetssrc, then there is my configuration. If you do not have this file, you can create this manually. So let's get started with our basic aliases first. So I'm going to go to the bottom of my file and create a section called uh, normal aliases or general aliases, right? So let me put this in the middle of the screen. <laughs> And now I'm going to create my first alias. So alias basically is a pseudonym or a nickname, or you can call it as a cover that masks some kind of command for you. So let's get started with our first alias. So to create an alias in ZSH, you have to use the keyword alias and then name of the alias. So I'm going to create an alias for Python. So it's going to be PY. Uh, I'm going to write PY equals to, remember there should not be any spaces before or after the equals to symbol. So yeah, PY equals to, it's going to be Python 3. So this is it. We have created our first alias. I'm going to save this configuration file, then exit from it. After we create our alias, always remember to source our configuration file. So sourcing means it's basically loading all the configuration into the current session. For that, you can use the keyword source and the location of the configuration file. In our case, it's in our home directory and name is ZSSRC. But uh, instead of source, you can also write dot and followed by ZSSRC, it will do the same. Now let's put our alias to test. So we created an alias called py, which is a mask for Python command. So if I do py, it's going to run Python on my terminal. So we created our very first alias. As you can see, alias can be a mask for any command. So we just ran source zssrc. Maybe we can create an alias for that as well. So let me go to my configuration file and create an alias called jetr maybe. So this is basically an abbreviation for ZSS reload maybe. So equals to what I'm going to do is source and path to my configuration file. So after I do this, this is the only time I'll have to do source ZSS RC again, right? So if I go to my configuration file, add another alias, let's say uh, subs. So it's just going to write, uh, echo right so subscribe and i'm going to save it exit it and if i do jet r which stands for jetss reload it's going to reload my configuration file and if i write subs it's going to output subscribe so based on your use cases you can write any aliases in this configuration file and make it your own and be productive along the way now moving on let's go to global aliases as you can see, normal aliases are pretty static. They can be just a single thing and nothing more. So where global aliases sign is in being more dynamic. Unlike general aliases, global aliases can be used in multiple places in a single command. It can be used multiple times in different commands. Let me show you what I mean. So whenever we are opening a file, let's say I have a file called JTSS aliases.md, which is a written blog post for this video. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description below. So a common practice is you want to open a file and you want to have a pagination along with it. So we pass the command less with a pipe to the output of cat command. So when we do this, you know, we are paginating the markdown file and we can like check each and everything line by line, which is pretty handy. With global aliases, we can mock something like pipe less or pipe jq, whatever command we want that resides either in the middle of the command at the end or somewhere between your pipes of Unix commands. But the thing to note here is you cannot use global aliases at the very beginning of the command. So with that note, let's go and create our first global alias. Uh, I'm going to create a section again called global alias. Uh, I'm going to create an alias with minus G flag. 
So if you want to create a global alias, you have to use the minus Z followed by the name of the alias, a general rule of thumb that I follow. If you want to create a global alias, always make it capital so that it is distinct from rest of the alias because you know other aliases looks like just general bash commands but i want to make my global aliases distinct so if i'm going to create a global alias for pipe and less i'm going to write that alias as a capital l so this is going to mask pipe followed by less let's go back to our terminal and test our global alias in action so reload our jtss configuration now let's do the same that we did earlier i'm going to cat jtss aliases dot md and instead of pipe less i'm going to use capital l here so it has the same result right so one example is not enough so let's go ahead and create another global alias I'm going to delete this line break alias minus G. I'm going to add J as JQ. So this is an alias for JQ, uh, which basically parses JSON on the command line. It's pretty handy. If you haven't used it, go and download it now. So I have a new global alias called capital J, which masks pipe and JQ. So with this, what I can do is first of all reload. Then what I want to do is curl minus S and uh, let's see, I want to curl uh, GitHub API. So api.github.com slash my username, right? So what we generally do with JQ is get the data we want from a JSON response. Let's just see what kind of response we get from this. So, okay, wrong URL. Uh, there needs to be slash users slash my username. So this is the JSON data we get from the GitHub API. And now let's say I want to parse it. I want to have so my username and maybe so my blog. So what I can do is like this JQ dot. Uh, so login is my username. And if I do dot blog, blog is the URL to my blog. So yeah, we don't have to go through this anymore. What we can do is use capital J followed by blog, maybe, right? So followed by, um, I don't know, site admin, false, right? So this is pretty handy. Like if you want recursive use of JQ, um, I don't know that's feasible, but you know, with aliases, sky is the limit. So you can do whatever you want. So that is global aliases in ZSS. Moving on, next we are going to look at suffix, my typo, okay, suffix aliases so what are suffix aliases so what suffix aliases are mapping for a file extension and the app we want to open that file with so let's say we have a python file in our repository and we want to open it by default on vs code editor or neovim or vim whatever editor of your choice but how do you define those defaults well the answer is zss aliases so let's see this in action um, let's create our alias first so alias, um, you might already know the pattern. So global aliases has minus G in it and suffix alias has minus S. Let me just simply change this first. Come back. Yeah. So let's see what is the file extension that we want to target here. I want to target something like a Python file and it always has to open in a application called code, uh, which is sort for VS code, right? So let's go reload our configuration. Now, if I want to open that file, I can simply write the name of the file, which in my case is app.py and it will basically open VS code for me, right? So yeah, cool application. Moving on, uh, let's say instead of code, I want to open it on NeoVim and it's pretty straightforward. I can again do app.py and it's going to open in NeoVim. So it's pretty handy. So we can do like alias for let's say PDF file. It's going to be ocular for me in this case. And yeah, uh, one interesting feature that I want to show here is you can create a list of extension uh, that you want to target together. So let's say I want to target by go.js uh, with NeoVim, right? So yeah. Um, I can do that in uh, Jiffy. Yep, after that, I can simply, um, you know, open my file, app.js, right? 
So I have main.go. So this is pretty handy. So if you want to open a certain kind of file extension with a certain kind of application, then that is a suffix is a lifesaver. And finally, I'm going to show you the most powerful feature of JSH aliases, which are JSH functions. And the functions are powerful because it supports arguments. So let's see this in action. Uh, let me create a section first called function aliases, right? So when we are using kubectl tool for managing Kubernetes, uh, you often come across this scenario where you have to like kubectl apply minus F uh, name of the YAML file. So let's say demo.yaml and then you have to deploy it in certain kind of namespace. So N and the name of the namespace, which can be anything like tutorial maybe, right? So what we want to mimic here is in this command, we want to put an argument to demo.yml so that we can put the name of any file we want. And we want to put another argument here for the namespace so that we can deploy that application to any namespace of our choice. So let's get to it. Um, I'll create a alias called apply so unlike the above aliases you do not need to add in alias keyword on the front so you can just go ahead and create a function like any normal bash function so yeah it's called k apply and what i'm going to do here is kubectl apply minus f dollar one so dollar one means the first argument that we are going to set is going to be set here so followed by minus n and the second argument we pass is going to be set here. So this is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to reload my configuration again. So after this is done, what I'm going to do is I have a file called nginx, right? So I'm going to deploy it in a namespace called demo. So I do not have to type that long command. I can simply write k apply name of my manifest file and the namespace I want to deploy it to. So it's pretty handy. Once I do that, it's going to basically run that command in the background, right? So if I write k get pods minus n demo, we have created a deployment with our function alias. So this is pretty cool. So another cool thing I want to show with function aliases is generating go binaries. So let's go here. Mm, I'm going to add a function called gbin. So what it's going to do is I'm going to copy a command first. It's pretty long. So yeah, right. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So what we are basically doing here is we have three uh, placeholder for arguments, right? So basically, let's say I want to create a binary and I want to choose what OS I want to create it for, what is the architecture of the CPU that it is targeting, and finally, what is the name of that binary. So this is a pretty handy command. Let's see this in action. Reload, always reload. So if you are wondering what I'm doing with this continued and uh, suspended thing on my terminal, you can go ahead and check my last video on background tasks on Linux. So it will explain it all. So yeah, now that we have reloaded our configuration file, what we can do is we already have a file called um, main.go in this directory. So I'm going to create a binary out of that. So let's see, uh, gbin and uh, the first argument that we need to pass is uh, our operating system, which is Linux. If you are on Windows, type Windows. If you are on Mac, type Darwin. And next is the architecture of the CPU. So I am on AMD 64 followed by the name of the binary that we want. So for this, um, let's say yay or no, yay. Uh, let's say yo with two O's, right? So it will create a binary for us inside a directory called bin. Okay, so we already have yo. And if I run yo, Hello world. So it's running. That is pretty cool. So that is about it for all the things that you can do with aliases. So you can like uh, create your own aliases, try different things that you can streamline and make your terminal sessions more productive. So before we go, I want to show you one last command. So we have created a bunch of commands and I have like a lot more commands uh, from the extensions that I've installed in JetSets. So if you want to see all of those aliases, what you can do is like write alias right and it's going to dump all the alias that i have um yeah so you know this is not cool so if i do alias l you know like paginate it 
I can see it one by one, which is pretty awesome. So that's it for this video, guys. If you want to see similar contents in the future, do subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.